On the breakfast, economic experts urge the federal government to encourage digital economy rather than burden it with overtaxation. Also on the breakfast, Nigeria and other African countries may benefit from donor-assisted funding by OPEC for international development. Don't forget, we'll also be looking through today's newspapers, analyzing the biggest stories of the day. Welcome to The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. I am Messi Bopo. It's a beautiful Monday morning and it's very, uh, very wet, rainy day in Lagos. I mean, if you live in Lagos, you understand that it becomes almost very difficult, you know, to go about the day's business. But however, I hope you're getting yourself ready and you're maneuvering the situation. Be sure that you have a, an umbrella with you, a raincoat and a rainboat. Uh, you know, if it's necessary, just stay wherever it is that you are so you don't get trapped and stalked in the rain. But as always, we start off with a top trending conversation. We apologize for bringing you the breakfast a little bit behind shadow. Uh, top on the top trending this morning is that Sarah and all the students sue Buhari over ASU strike. And that has been uh, buzzing and generating and asking uh, a lot of questions. So you have people talking about you know, ASU and Sarah sewing. The strike has been ongoing for a very long time, about six months plus. Some people would say seven months strike. It started on the 14th of February, 2022. And ASU has decided to, you know, press that demand, uh, asking the government would need, meet their needs. But as it is, the Socioeconomic Rights and Accountability Project, Sarah, and five university students have dragged the president, Mohammed Buhari, so court over the prolonged strike action of the Academic Staff Union of Universities. I mean, uh, this suit was filed on behalf of uh, Serap and students by their lawyer, Taiwo. Uh, they've asked the president without further delay to implement all agreements with the academic body in order to bring to an end the lingering strike action, which according to them is a violation of uh, the student's right to quality education. Of course, everyone has a right. I mean, the details also uh, is quite lengthy. But for the want of time, the federal government, it's been said that had failed to respect the and protect and promote and fulfill its right to quality education and right to the freedom of association through the principle of collective bargaining. Although Nigeria has uh, ratified several human rights treaties which guarantee the right to quality education of Nigerian students, the federal government over the years have refused to meet the demands by ASU and to address poor environment in the country's universities. And so uh, the conversation still continues. A lot of persons are quite displeased you know, with what's going on. Uh, in terms of, you know, education right here. And so you have these students and ASU, five of them from different universities, come together to sue the president. But some persons are of a different opinion, and they're saying that, well, this is not the first time that you're having this. I mean, especially Sarab. Sarab has been suing without any ad com. Every other time, uh, Sarab is on the front burner, you know, suing the government, and uh, lots been going on in that particular regard. But there seems not to be a result with all of the suing. So some people think that this is also just one, uh, you know, of another action of ASU or Sarab. And some students, some people think it's quite commendable, but others actually think differently. And that's it on the top trending. But we're hoping that the government will understand. I think that this issue has been overflogged. This issue has actually been overflogged. We've talked about it a couple of times. I mean, we have talked about ASU and ASU. And I'm sure in the papers this morning, there will be a, a headline or a story on ASU. But uh, do we even need to go through the back and forth? I mean. Do we need to have people sue the government before the government would respond? Will the government respond? I mean, these are questions that are begging for answers, but fingers are crossed, and that's what it is. Let's see how the result would, uh, you know, what will become the result at the end of the day with the students and Sarah suing uh, the president over uh, non-implementation of the agreement for ASU 
and the fact that the strike has continued to linger. But not also to mention that the government has also made an effort to say, hey, out of 100%, we're going to do X, Y, Z. And I think that that has also not really sat well, you know, with the union and all the stakeholders in the education sector. And that's why the strike has not been called off. That's quite saddening and unfortunate. Away from that, you have IPOB recounts the aftermath of Biafra war. Um, so, to be very honest, we know that following the death of uh, Elizabeth, Queen Elizabeth II, uh, there's been several reactions. I mean, people have reacted differently. Others have been very excited. Uh, others, not really excited. I mean, others have been in tears. It's a death we're talking about. So you have a lot of persons who are sad, who are saddened by everything that has happened. But however, there's been... Uh, different reactions from different quarters. And some people have actually said that IPOP, you know, for instance, a professor who is in the United States, uh, Professor Uju, has reacted. Uh, you also have different persons, Uche, uh, who has also reacted. I mean, different persons have reacted. But if, it feels like, you know, those who have actually shared concerns about what has happened in, uh, during the Civil War have been categorized as members of IPOP, you know. So you have different reactions. You have people saying different things. And in the end, uh, we seem to be saying that IPOP uh, is recounting or have recounted an aftermath of the Biafran War. And uh, some persons have described it as a genocide. But really, let's even just go into it just briefly because of, uh, you know, uh, the want of time on our own part here. Uh, is it really a genocide? What really happened? The civil war. I mean, I grew up to know that a lot of persons talked about it as a civil war. Uh, they say it was a civil war, Nigerian civil war, the first of its kind. But all other persons do not believe that is a civil war because if you ask yourself what is a civil war, then you would say that uh, what is a civil war, you want to understand what a civil war is and what a genocide is. A genocide is a deliberate killing of a large number of people from a particular nation or ethnic group with the aim of destroying the nation or a group. And on the other hand, a civil war is simply a war between citizens of the same country. So what happened, you know, during the time? Uh, can we say that it was a civil war? We're talking about the Biafran War, as it's also been called. Was it a civil war or it was a genocide? These are some of the questions that begs for answer. Another one on a top trending this morning is a comedian that's very popular. Uh, he's been recognized and known as Sabinus. He sur survived an auto crash right here in Lagos, and that also generated different reaction. But we're very thankful. Uh, we're very thankful that nothing happened. I mean, if you look at you know pictures from that incident or from the scene of the accident. Uh, a lot of persons who were present could testify that nothing happened to Sabinus and he's alive. But there's something that he tweeted. He talked about uh, don't drink while you're driving or, you know, stay safe. Uh, I'm trying to paraphrase now, not in the same words that he said, but he said avoid drinking and driving. Stay safe, stay safe out there. And this is shortly after he acquired, you know, uh, a vehicle. Right, he shortly acquired a Benz, and that accident happened. No reports whatsoever whether uh, there were casualties. I mean, we're talking about death at this point in time, or well, uh, very, very sad, and it looks really dangerous. But we're uh, saying it's a good thing that no one actually lost their lives. As long as you have a life, uh, people would always say that there's hope. Is a popular phrase and a cliche. But that's it on our top trending this morning. What's very important that as we go about our businesses and as you uh, drive, you're on the steering, just be careful, you know, just be careful. Uh, do the needful, obey the rules of, uh, that governs driving, the traffic laws and what have you, and so that you will be protecting not just yourself, but the other person on the other side. That's it on our top trending. We'll take a break. When we return, it'll be time for us to go through the front pages for National Days. Please stay with us.